so we will continue with geological time scale so what is geography we will read about the various incidents that has occurred in the past and which was the continent how the continent was separated how the world was divided into various continents and all those we studied in uh, we study in geography right and what is this geological time scale it means that right from the evolution of earth till now update how and all the organisms have been modified themselves to uh, to form into a proper human being so that is called as geological time scale so in geological time scale we have four important eras okay now each of these eras is much significant for a single primitive organelle and that we will see it later and now in this geological time scale these eras are divided into various periods and now this period is divided into epochs okay so now this is the order so you can remember it as a kingdom where a particular king in a kingdom is era and king has his uh, various uh, ministries right ministers so they are called as these periods and under them they'll have uh, the servants and the other people who are working in the kingdom and that is an epoch so that you can remember it as so now uh, we will study about four uh, important eras so the first era is pre-cambrian era pre-cambrian era is one oldest era right from the beginning of the earth that is 3000 million years ago so we studied that uh, life has been evolved in ocean in the form of coazobates so these coazobates are eventually a single celled organelles right now this single celled organelle has eventually become the multicellular organelles that is prokaryotes and eukaryotes and then there is a formation of planktons so planktons are very much very smaller organelles which you can view under the microscope so they are all movable they are all motile organelles which you can view under the microscope so till now we have planktons okay and plankton is the much important uh, a red mark for evolution not a red mark it is just a tag a tag for evolution you could say plantains right so that is about the pre cambrian era and what i have written on the whiteboard is all about the important events and the one mark questions so next is paleozoic era paleozoic era is ranging from 205 to 510 million years ago and this we had invertebrate so whom do we call as invertebrates organism which do not possess backbone spinal cord like humans and we call them as invertebrates so most of these invertebrates they possess hemolymph which means that their blood is not exactly red in color they do not carry the hemoglobin or methemoglobin pigment rather they have white color this thing uh, white color pigment that is called as hemocele so all those invertebrates and which were uh, invertebrates are aquatic invertebrates and then this led into land invertebrates and then this led into various fish and then reptiles and much important note uh, on this paleozoic era as they had enormous amount of echinoderms so whom do we call as echinoderms is that any animal which is which has a spiny skin and they are called as echinoderms for example sea stars so we don't call them as starfish they are not a fish variety right so we call them as sea star so sea stars they have spiny skin organelles right and they are all aquatic organelles so most of these echinoderms almost all of the echinoderms are aquatic organelles and organisms so sea stars sea urchins so all these come under uh, echinoderms and in plants the primitive plants which is bryophytes and then the third is mesozoic era mesozoic which means the middle era right and which is ranging from 125 to 180 million years and this mesozoic era is called as the golden age of reptiles so my favorite animal is dinosaurs so dinosaurs they came into existence in this mesozoic era so you, you should have seen this t-rex fighting with other dinosaurs no so tignosaurus rex and we have the other uh, the species of dinosaurs so this uh, if you don't know you get yeah, you just google search it on the different species of dinosaur they seem to be much scary and terrific but they're all much docile organisms and then uh, how did these dinosaurs uh, become extinct is still 
a very big question mark and people believe that a meteor died the earth and this dinosaurs died and there could be various reasons also but still why did dinosaurs become extinct is still a question mark right and then in this Mesozoic era, we had these conifers, pine trees, uh, gymnosperms, naked seeded plants. So all these evolved in Mesozoic era. And then in Cenozoic era, and this era is ranging from 1 to 100 million years, right? And they have mammals, birds, and at last we humans, such a technical world with, with all scientific, with all technical items. And that's how mammals, birds, and then humans. And right after the humans were um, evolved, and there, there was a golden period of these angiosperms, that is the flowering plants. Now we have various ornamental flowering plants, right? We have rose, jasmine, sunflower, all different sort of flowering plants were flourished in this Cenozoic era. So now we have seen all these eras and during uh, like while I spoke about the different theories of evolution, one important theory was the last theory, chemical evolution. So to, to prove this chemical evolution, there's a theory of abiogenesis. So Yuri Miller, she made up uh, a glass apparatus in such a way that one would resemble earth, the other would resemble sun and the, all the gases and how did these uh, co-asserts form. So that I am going to teach you in this much simplest form of uh, diagram and first what happened she took a round bottom flask and this flask you can imagine, imagine it as earth okay and now what happened continuous uh, she filled half of the flask with water and she kept flame underneath so that the round bottom flask uh, the water in the round bottom flask they started boiling right once they reach 100 degrees celsius they started boiling and what will happen the the gas in the water will eventually release out and she has connected a tube where another round flask which had tungsten electrode that is the current and the various gases was there now once the gas which is uh, liberated from the, the hydrogen and the oxygen gas they mixed with the tungsten electrode and there was a condenser to con condense this and there was an inlet and an outlet for water and now what happened she collected the water the droplet of water in a conical flask and now it was a greatest surprise that all these chemicals these gases they combine to form various other gases and various other chemicals so there were a lot of um, amino acids so now what it prove was because we humans so we study biochemistry which means that the human body is made up of chemicals and we call it as biochemical since it is present in human body we call it as biochemicals right so this biochemicals they, this contain all of nitrogenous bases phosphate dna has a phosphate background uh, backbone and when you talk about uh, the transcription and translation process you need a lot of amino acid and proteins right so all this the water contain so eventually this experiment yuri miller experiment proved that it was a purely a chemical evolution where all these chemicals lead in led into a proper form of life that is the co waves and from then eukaryotes and then invertebrates, vertebrates, reptiles, mammals, birds and at last humans.